The Supreme King versus Jim and Axel. Evil Heroes versus Fossil and Volcanic. Let me set the stage. Jaden has just regressed into the Supreme King. Jim and Axel want to break him free. However, like most things, this proves rather difficult. The reason for that is, spoilers, neither one of these duelists are able to defeat the Supreme King. However, thanks to the combined efforts of Jim's sacrifice and Axel pulling off a last second draw, this ultimately leads to his freedom. But the question then becomes, should a duelist as powerful as the Supreme King have even drawn this final duel at all? Or perhaps if we look through the duel, did Jim and Axel make any mistakes that cost them the duels? We won't know unless we jump into the duels. The duel begins and Jim goes first. He draws and his opening hand consists of Shell Knight, Fossil Diner Pachycephalo, Uluru's Guardian, Fossil Fusion, Time Stream, and Sakuretsu Armor. I'm gonna need you all to cut me some slack today. There's some really hard fossil names. If I do it wrong, just, just give me a break, okay? Okay. Jim starts by summoning his Shell Knight to the field into defense. Due to the effect of Shell Knight, when it is summoned, it can inflict 500 damage to the opponent. The Supreme King takes the first damage of the duel. Jim ends his turn by setting Sakuretsu armor face down. Why, I hear some of you ask, did Jim not summon his Fossil Diner? Because of course, this monster's pretty broken, as we know in the real world. Summon it to the field, neither player is allowed to special summon any monsters. Meaning the Supreme King would have to deal with this monster before he can even get out any fusion monsters at all. So that's quite strong. Or even better, set this monster face down so that when it's flipped up, it destroys all special summon monsters. Why not start with this play? Well, that's because it's completely different in the anime, like a lot of cards we're gonna see today. Basically, there wasn't really any other plays Jim could have done on this first turn. It's the Supreme King's turn, and he draws. His opening hand consists of Elemental Hero Avion, Elemental Hero Bastinatrix, Elemental Hero Clayman, Elemental Hero Sparkman, Evil Hero Malicious Edge, and Dark Fusion. The Supreme King starts by activating Dark Fusion. This card is essentially polymerization. However, it can only be used to summon fiend type monsters. However, by using Dark Fusion, you get an additional effect. Any monster summoned by Dark Fusion gains immunity to targeting for the rest of the turn. And so with five monsters in the Supreme King's hand, he has three options for fusion summons. His first choice is Evil Hero Infernal Sniper. By using Clayman and Bastinatrix, he can get it out. This monster would need to be summoned into defense, and in defense, it can poke Jim for 1,000 damage each turn until it is destroyed. The second choice is Evil Hero Lightning Golem. He can make this monster by using Clayman and Sparkman. Due to its effect, it can destroy one monster each turn. This would mean he could destroy Shell Knight with its effect and then attack directly for 2,400 direct damage. The Supreme King's third choice is Evil Hero Inferno Wing, which can be made by using Avion and Bastinatrix. This monster deals piercing battle damage, and when it destroys a monster in battle, it inflicts damage based on the highest stat of the destroyed monster to the opponent. Now this is a really good aggressive card. Piercing battle damage if Jim tries to defend himself, which he plays a lot of defensive monsters, it makes sense. And if he has a monster with high defense or high attack, when it's destroyed, it will deal damage straight back to him. With these three options available to the Supreme King, I can reveal with the power of hindsight, the best choice would probably have been anything but the one he goes for, Inferno Wing. It's not the effect that made this monster the wrong choice. Unfortunately, it's its attack points. You see, Jim will only be able to get out a monster with 2,400 attack points throughout the next few turns. Had the Supreme King gone for the 2,500 defense sniper, he would be able to deal 1,000 damage every turn. Jim wouldn't have been able to get back into the duel in that time, and most likely, we probably would have lost. The same goes for Lightning Golem. With a 2,400 attack point monster, the only way Jim can deal with this monster is by crashing his 2,400 attack point monster in it to destroy both. However, Jim will draw a card called Half-Life, which will keep his monster alive by cutting its attack in half. 
However, after that, he will get out another powerful monster, and now Jim has no options to get rid of that monster, and he will lose before he gets the opportunity to come back into the duel. Obviously, I can't give any misplays to the Supreme King here. You need the power of hindsight to know those were the better choices, of course. And let's be honest, I say misplays, but he's still going to end up winning this duel, so not really a bad choice, but he did cut it a bit close towards the end, so he could have won much more confidently had he picked one of the other two. Let's get back to the actual duel. The Supreme King fusion summons evil hero Inferno Wing. He immediately enters his battle phase and attacks Shell Knight. As the attack is declared, Jim activates his set trap Sakuretsu armor, which targets and then destroys an attacking monster. Unfortunately, since Sakuretsu armor targets before the destruction, its effect fizzles thanks to Dark Fusion. Since Inferno Wing isn't destroyed, the attack continues, and Shell Knight is destroyed. Inferno Wing inflicts 100 piercing battle damage, followed by 2000 burn damage, since Shell Knight had 2000 defense points. Just think as well, if the Supreme King would have summoned Sparkman to the field, attacked with both of the monsters, she would only have 300 life points left which would have been another way the Supreme King could have won a little bit earlier. The Supreme King ends his turn. As he does, Jim's Orichalcum Eye is revealed. This thing boosts his overall strength and even gives him the ability to dive into Jaden's psyche. Inside, he sees a traumatized Jaden. Despite his best efforts, Jim is unable to get through to him, and so he is forced to continue the duel. And so, it's back to Jim and he draws Half-Life. Now, since there are monsters in both players' graves, he's able to activate his fusion card, Fossil Fusion. This card lets him fuse by banishing monsters from either player's graveyards as his materials. In the real world, Jim would have three options for who to summon, since all three require a rock monster and a level 4 or lower monster to be summoned. Unfortunately, in the anime, these options are whittled down to only one choice. This is because in the anime, the requirements are much more specific. Skullgar needs a level 4 or lower dinosaur monster to be summoned. Skull Buggy, well, we don't know what that needs because it was never summoned in at all. I assume a machine monster. So that means the only option we have here is Skull Bone, since it requires a rock type monster and a level 4 or lower warrior type monster. He summons out his only option, Fossil Warrior Skull Bone. Now, this monster seemingly has no effect in the anime. So, Jim pays half his life points to activate his Time Stream spell. This card lets him upgrade his Fossil Fusion monster to a higher level one. More specifically, and stay with me here, he evolves his Cenozoic Era Fossil into a Mesozoic Era Fossil. Had a Mesozoic Era Fossil monster been on the field, then he could have upgraded it into a Paleozoic Era Fossil monster. This makes so much more sense in the Japanese because they actually have their fossil era names on the actual names of the monsters. In the international, they're just all called fossils. You just need to know where they're from kind of thing. But that's how that card works. Fun fact. The point I'm trying to make is that Jim had two options to upgrade his Cenozoic era fossil warrior Skull Bone into. Since Skull Wagon has poor stats, Fossil Warrior Skull Knight was the obvious choice. Now this monster has the effect that if it attacks and the opponent still controls a monster after that attack, he can attack once again. With this in mind, Jim moves into his battle phase and attacks. As the damage is being dealt, Jim activates his Half-Life spell, which prevents a monster from being destroyed by instead halving its attack. Now, since there is still a monster on the field, Skull Knight's effect allows it to attack again. This time, Inferno Wing is successfully destroyed. Jim ends his turn. It's the Supreme King's turn, and he draws O Oversoul. He activates it right away to special summon a normal Elemental Hero monster in his grave. He brings back Elemental Hero Avion. Now, since Jim controls a monster, the Supreme King is able to summon his evil hero, Malicious Edge, with one less tribute. The Supreme King enters his battle phase and then attacks and destroys Fossil Warrior Skull Knight. The Supreme King ends his turn. It's Jim's turn and he draws his field spell, Sacred Defense Barrier. He activates it immediately. 
Now, with this field spell on the field, every time Jim summons a rock type monster, that monster will be imbued with a protection counter. A monster with a protection counter is unable to be destroyed once. And so, Jim summons his Uluru's Guardian into defense. Defense barrier imbues it with a protection counter. And with that, Jim ends his turn. It's the Supreme King's turn, and he draws Fake Hero. He immediately enters his battle phase and attacks Uluru's Guardian. Due to the protection counter, it is not destroyed in that battle. However, its protection is now removed. The Supreme King reveals Malicious Edge's effect here. It is able to deal piercing battle damage. With no further plays, the Supreme King ends his turn. It's Jim's turn and he draws Uluru's The Guardian Spirit. He sets it face down and ends his turn. Back to the Supreme King, he draws and gets Evil Hero Infernal Gainer. He summons it straight to the field and then enters his battle phase. He attacks Uluru's Guardian, it is destroyed, and piercing battle damage is yet again dealt. Infernal Gainer then attacks directly, attempting to go for gain. However, Jim activates his set trap, Uluru's The Guardian Spirit. This card can only be activated if Uluru is in the graveyard. By activating it, it summons itself to the field into defense as a trap monster. Since it is a rock type as well, it gains a protection counter from the field spell. And due to its high defense, Infernal Gainer is unable to continue its attack. Instead, the Supreme King activates Gainer's effect. It removes itself from the field for two turns. By doing this, it allows another fiend monster on the field to attack again this turn. He chooses Malicious Edge, and so it attacks again, reducing Jim's life points down to a mere 50. Uru, the Guardian Spirit, is not destroyed due to the protection counter. However, as the turn comes to an end, the last effect of Uru, the Guardian Spirit, does activate. It destroys itself during the end phase. The Supreme King ends his turn. I think Jim's plan here was to hopefully keep Uluru on the field for his next turn because it would have had a protection counter and then when it went to destroy itself during the end phase, the protection counter would have been removed but it would have stayed for another turn. I don't think Jim planned on this monster being defeated so soon so I think this might have been one of the moments that led to Jim's defeat here. It's back to Jim and he draws Fossil Hammer. He activates it straight away. Due to its effect, it destroys the highest level monster on the opponent's field. Since Malicious Edge is the highest, it is destroyed. However, due to the second effect of Fossil Hammer, the opponent can then summon one monster from their grave into attack with a lower level than a destroyed monster. With no other options, the Supreme King summons Elemental Hero Avion back to the field. Jim summons his Fossil Diner, and as he does, it is imbued with a protection counter. He enters his battle phase and attacks and destroys Avion. Fossil Diner's effect activates, switching itself into defense, and then increasing its defense by the defense of the destroyed monster until the end of the opponent's next end phase. With 2,300 defense, Jim ends his turn. It's the Supreme King's turn, and he draws Dark Fusion. He activates it and fuses his Sparkman and Clayman together to make Evil Hero Lightning Golem. The Supreme King uses Lightning Golem's effect to destroy one monster on the opponent's field. He attempts to destroy Fossil Diner, however the protection counter keeps it alive. And so to get rid of the monster, he enters his battle phase, attacks and destroys it. The Supreme King ends his turn. It's Jim's turn, and the penultimate turn of the duel. He draws and gets Miracle Rupture. He activates it straight away. Due to its effect, he can send a rock type monster from his deck to the grave and then draw a new card. He sends his Weathering Soldier from his deck to the grave in order to draw a new card. He gets Gaia Plate, the Earth Giant. Due to the effect of Gaia, he can banish two Earth monsters in his grave to summon it straight to the field. Gaia attacks Lightning Golem. Due to its effect, it halves the attack of Lightning Golem. The attack is successful, and the Supreme King's life points are reduced all the way down to a mere 50 points. The same as Jim's. Jim ends his turn here with the hope that he has done enough damage to get through to Jaden. Spoilers, he doesn't. The Supreme King just carries on with his next turn. 
But before we get to that, I do want to just say it's kind of a shame that Jim couldn't send anything better to the graveyard with his miracle rupture effect. What I mean by this is if he had a monster in his deck that had some sort of graveyard ability, specifically one that could special summon itself, he would have won this turn. In fact, in a cruel twist of fate, the monster that Jim sent to the graveyard, Weathering Soldier, had he sent the real world version of this monster, he would have won because that monster adds a fossil fusion to his hand when it's sent to the grave. He could have used fossil fusion to fuse with the Supreme King's level 7 monster over in his grave with one of his rock monsters in his grave and he could have made a big monster. It's such a shame that he couldn't do this. In the future, I would add a monster like Revival Golem or something like that. So it's just a shame he didn't have a monster in his deck that had a graveyard effect. It's not a misplay by any means, but like it would have been better. It's the Supreme King's turn, and the final turn of the duel. He draws and gets Super Polymerization. During the Supreme King's standby phase, evil hero Infernal Gainer comes back to the field. Did you remember this monster was coming back to the field this turn? I wonder, I wonder if you did. The Supreme King discards one card in his hand to activate his ultimate fusion card. He discards Fake Hero to play Super Polymerization. Super Polymerization cannot be chained to in any way, shape, or form. You cannot negate the activation of Super Polymerization once it's been played. And what does this card do? It fuses using both sides of the field. And so, the Supreme King fuses his Infernal Gainer with Jim's Gaia Plate, the Earth Giant. Now, by fusing one Fiend monster with one Rock-type monster, he is able to summon Evil Hero Dark Gaia. Dark Gaia's attack becomes the sum of its materials. Despite this monster's ability to switch defense position monsters into attack, it's completely unnecessary, as with a completely open field, the Supreme King attacks Jim directly, winning him the duel and unfortunately killing Jim in the process. A dark end to a pretty decent duel, to be honest with you, and Axel's so shaken up by this, he runs away. But don't worry, he returns with confidence. And so, we move into Duel 2. The duel begins and Axel goes first. He draws, and his opening hand consists of Volcanic Blaster, Volcanic Hammerer, Fire Recovery, Triblaze Accelerator, Volcanic Cyclone, and Firewall. Axel sets his firewall trap face down and ends his turn. It's the Supreme King's turn and he draws. His opening hand consists of Elemental Hero Avion, Elemental Hero Wildheart, Elemental Hero Clayman, Dark Fusion, Dark Calling, and Evil Blast. The Supreme King starts by activating Dark Fusion. He fuses his Elemental Hero Avion with his Elemental Hero Wildheart to summon Evil Hero Wild Cyclone. The Supreme King moves into his battle phase and attacks Axel directly. Axel attempts to activate his face down firewall, however it is revealed Wild Cyclone prevents any spell or traps from activating when it declares an attack. As such, the attack continues, and Axel takes the first damage of the duel. But Wild Cyclone isn't done. Its secondary effect now activates. Since it inflicted battle damage, it now destroys all set spells and traps Axel has on the field. The Supreme King ends his turn. Let me quickly address the elephant in the room, Dark Calling in the Supreme King's hand. If you're familiar with what this card does in the real world, it's kind of similar. The reason he didn't use this card, get out a 2100 attack point monster and go for game is because he can't. There is no fusion that I know of that Avion, Wildheart, and a potential Clayman getting added to the mix. These three things don't fuse in any way, shape, or form. There's no combination of these that make anything. Nothing he can make that would be available to him back then anyway, so uh, no misplay. It's back to Axel, and he draws Volcanic Slicer. He summons it to the field into defense. He then activates its effect, which deals 500 damage to the opponent. However, by using this effect, he's unable to attack with it for the rest of the turn. Axel ends his turn by setting Volcanic Cyclone face down. It's the Supreme King's turn and he draws Vicious Claw. Yet again, he moves straight into his battle phase and uses Wild Cyclone to attack and destroy Volcanic Slicer. Since no damage was dealt via Wild Cyclone, none of Axel's cards are destroyed. The Supreme King instead sets Evil Blast face down 
and ends his turn. It's Axel's turn, and he draws Blaze Accelerator. He activates it, and then immediately sends it to the graveyard in order to activate its upgraded form, Tri-Blaze Accelerator. Now, with this card on the field, during each of Axel's main phases, he can send a Pyro-type monster from his hand to the grave to destroy one monster the Supreme King controls. When he does this, he will also inflict 500 damage to the opponent. However, by using this effect, Axel will be unable to attack that turn. With no hesitation, Axel uses its effect, sending his pyro-type volcanic hammerer in his hand to the grave. Wild Cyclone is destroyed, and the Supreme King takes 500 damage. Axel follows up this play by activating Fire Recovery. Now, by discarding one fire monster in his hand, he can summon another from his graveyard. He sends Volcanic Blaster to bring back Volcanic Hammerer. Fire Recovery, that's a pretty cool card. It's a shame they've never made this in the real world. It's pretty decent volcanic support, fire support in general. They, they should think about... What's that? They've literally just announced that card the day I'm making this video. That's, that's so spooky. But pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, fun fact. To end his turn, Axel activates Volcanic Hammerer's effect. This card deals 200 damage to the opponent for each volcanic monster he has in his grave. Since there are two, he deals 400 damage. Axel ends his turn. It's the Supreme King's turn, and he draws Elemental Hero Bastinatrix. He activates Dark Calling. Its effect lets him banish one Dark Fusion in his graveyard in order to fuse using his hand or graveyard. Now, this is where something really weird happens. The Supreme King states and even shows him banishing Bastinatrix from his hand and Clayman from his graveyard. But that doesn't make any sense. Clayman was in his hand, and we very clearly see him pulling the Clayman out of his graveyard. So what's the deal here? Um, I have no idea. It's just a really big error. Um, it's just a mistake. Regardless, there's no misplays here, just an error, and the result is the Supreme King summons evil hero Infernal Sniper into defense. He activates its effect, which lets it deal 1000 damage to the opponent once per turn, as long as it's in defense position. And so, Axel takes 1000 damage. Following the damage, another weird thing happens. The Supreme King reveals Infernal Sniper's second effect, that it can't be destroyed by spell cards. This is odd because this isn't typically how villains work in the anime series. We learned from my Why Don't Yu-Gi-Oh! characters read video that, well, public knowledge in early Yu-Gi-Oh! is non-existent. You only know what effects of cards can do unless you experience them, your opponent tells you what they do, or you have prior knowledge of what the card effect is. By divulging this information, the Supreme King has guaranteed that Axel won't misplay now. Like, if he tried to use the Tri-Blaze Accelerator to destroy his monster, he might have learnt the hard way and just whiffed kind of things. So that option isn't there anymore, so it's weird. I mean, I don't mind people revealing their effects so everybody has public knowledge, but it's just weird for a, a bad guy to do. Maybe it's cockiness, maybe it's confidence or something like that, but regardless, uh, the Supreme King ends his turn. It's Axel's turn, and he draws his ace monster, Volcanic Doomfire. He sends his Triblaze Accelerator to the graveyard in order to special summon it to the field. Volcanic Doomfire attacks and destroys Infernal Sniper. Volcanic Hammerer then attacks directly. Axel ends his turn. It's the Supreme King's turn, and the penultimate turn of the duel. He draws and gets Evil Hero Infernal Prodigy. Since the Supreme King has no monsters on his side of the field, he's able to special summon this monster straight to the field. The Supreme King then tributes it to summon his evil hero Malicious Edge. Not only that, but since Infernal Prodigy was tributed for a tribute summon, its effect allows the Supreme King to draw a new card. He gets Super Polymerization. The Supreme King activates Vicious Claw, equipping it to Malicious Edge. This increases its attack by 300. Malicious Edge attacks Volcanic Hammer. However, due to the effect of Volcanic Doomfire, the attack is redirected to Volcanic Doomfire instead. With lesser attack, the Supreme King takes damage. However, before the monster is destroyed, he activates Vicious Claw's effect, which causes the equipped spell to return back to the hand to prevent the monster's destruction via battle. Following this, the third effect of Vicious Claw then activates, which destroys another monster that the opponent controls that wasn't involved in the battle, and then 600 damage is dealt. 
Volcanic Hammerer is destroyed. Finally, the fourth effect of Vicious Claw activates. This effect special summons an evil token to Axel's side of the field in attack position. Not wanting Axel to get an opportunity to use that token against him, the Supreme King plays his face down evil blast, which equips itself to the evil token. This card increases its attack by 500, However, now, during each of Axel's standby phases, Evil Blast will deal 500 damage to Axel. The Supreme King sets Super Polymerization face down and ends his turn. It's Axel's turn, and the final turn of the duel. He draws and gets Volcanic Counter. He activates his face down trap, Volcanic Cyclone. Due to its effect, he sends one monster from his hand, Volcanic Counter, to the grave in order to destroy a spell or trap on the field. He destroys Evil Blast. Axel moves into his battle phase and uses Doomfire to attempt to destroy Malicious Edge. However, this is where the Supreme King activates his face down Super Polymerization by discarding Vicious Claw. He fuses Malicious Edge with Axel's Evil Token. He summons to the field evil hero Malicious Fiend. A replay occurs, and due to the effect of Malicious Fiend, it forces monsters the opponent controls into attacking it. And so, Volcanic Doomfire is destroyed. As Axel's life points are about to drop to zero, that's where he does his final move. The effect of Volcanic Counter in his grave. You see, when Axel takes battle damage, it automatically removes itself from play. It then deals damage to the opponent equal to the battle damage that Axel just took. And so, the Supreme King's life points also drop to zero. The duel ends in a draw. Axel dies as a result of this, but so does the Supreme King. This act restores Jaden back to normal. However, now Jaden has the opportunity to finally control the gentle darkness within him. Now, what did I think about these two duels? I thought they were good. I thought the Supreme King remained calm and collected throughout the entire duel. In the first duel, I don't think there were many misplays off Jim. I think he did the best he could with the cards he had. In terms of Axel, I think he might have had a bit more of a chance against the Supreme King. Hard to say, but I think with some slightly ulterior plays, he might have come out on top. I think the Supreme King generally was uh, the better duelist out of the two. Want to learn more about the Volcanics? I have a video right here. Or are you more of an evil hero kind of person? Well, I have a video right here instead. Check out one of those if you fancy. But other than that, thank you for watching. Catch you later.